Thank you all. Thank you, Lisa. Th this beautiful, beautiful synagogue oh, is such a, uh, an extraordinary setting. And to see all of you uh, here to really acclaim this amazing book. Thank I mean, you. Thank this you. is a work of fiction, but it is so resonant for any of us who imagine or who have spent time in Afghanistan. So even though, unlike uh, your first two novels, this is less, as you've described it, less Af Afghan-centric right. and more global in its, its perspective, I'm wondering still how central the complex history of Afghanistan is to your writing, to your narrative. Well, it's, it's always been Afghanistan and the tumult of the last 30, 30 some odd years has always been a kind of a background character in my novels, uh, featured very prominently in the first and especially in my, my second book. Um, it's in the background in this novel as well, although I would say not quite as prominently. Um, part of that is because as, as I wrote the novel, I saw the characters' struggles playing out on a more personal, intimate level. It was more of a human drama and not necessarily playing out on a big kind of um, political arena. But there are certainly characters in this, book, in this book whose lives are seriously impacted by the events in Afghanistan, by the, by the Taliban, by the infighting in Afghanistan, and so on and so forth. It's just not quite as, as, as forceful of an impact. Part of it is because I... I, I, it's sort of my small way to attempt to try and change the conversation a little bit about Afghanistan. Um, I felt like I dealt with those things quite a bit in my first, first two books, and it's nice to have a conversation about Afghanistan and talk about characters, you know, the relationship between brother and a sister, parent and child, talk about, you know, your complicated feelings about wealth and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth, rather than the war and the, the arm fighting and so on and so forth. I, I read that you, you said that this is a love story and clearly the relationship between Pari and Abdullah, uh, the sibling relationship, is rooted in this fierce love. But there is so much heartbreak and sacrifice and betrayal. Uh, talk about the family and, and the, the, the sibling relationships are clearly central in all of these parallel lives. Right. But there's also the father and child and the, um, the sacrificing of children, first in the allegory with which you open, um, sacrificing yeah. the child to the devil, but then, of course, um, the heartbreak that follows. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the novel is, is, is sort of shaped like a tree. Uh, and at the yeah. heart of the novel is this, yeah, a love story between a boy who's 10 years old and his three-year-old sister we meet them first in the early 1950s, and they live in an impoverished, remote village in Afghanistan, and they're on their way to Kabul with their father. They're kind of trekking across this desert, and neither child knows what's in store for them in Kabul. When they do get to Kabul, something rather dramatic happens that splits this beautiful relationship between the brother and his beloved little sister, and they're separated. And it's a separation that, that devastates both in very unique and specific ways. Um, and, uh, and from there, the story just spreads out, uh, spreads to other places, to other characters. This one act early in the novel has echoes. That's why the word echo is there, really, because it's a central event in the book that then ripples across time, across continent, across generations, and affects the lives of many other characters. But at core, it's a family story, and it's a love story, just like you said. And it's and it's love between brothers and sisters, it's be between father and, and, and daughter, it's between cousins, it's between... I'm interested in manifestations of love that are uh, kind of different from the usual when we hear the word love, there's sort of a romantic notion of man meets woman, they fall in love. I'm, I'm sort of disinclined to write that as a kind of dramatic motive. You know, I'm, I'm very interested in love that blossoms in places where you wouldn't expect it between two people who have an unlikely, unlikely deep, meaningful relationship under difficult cir circumstances. And, and so many of these relationships of love also involve caregiving. Um, yeah. First, 
between the, the twin sisters, then between Nabi and Suleiman. Um, what is it about that role of caregiving that also um, inspires you to want to create these characters? Well, it, it's, it's again, a, it's a manifestation of love that is, is, is something that you don't immediately think about. When you think about love, you think of, you know, meeting somebody and then falling in love and you go on a date and that sort of thing. But it turns out that love is a lot of work and it's tiring and it tests your patience. <laughs> And, and it's, it's, um, it's complicated. You know, when my, my father became sick uh, and, uh, and the, the last uh, year and a half, two years of his life were uh, very difficult. And as he gradually lost his, 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 uh, his faculties and his became increasingly dependent, I saw my mother so bravely take care of him and she dedicated her entire life to caring after him, to, to feeding him, to doing all the things that and, and I saw in that this, this beautiful, just rock solid expression of love that I'd ever seen. And, and, and that kind of expression of love, writing about that really to me is very appealing because it's, it's, it's enduring, it's meaningful, it's deep, and, 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 and I find it very touching and very moving. You said that you were inspired by the William Blake poem and yeah. the nurse's song and the idea of of the children's voices echoing in the mountains. Um, what about that poem captured your imagination? Well, I had written the whole novel and I kept waiting for a title which never came and I uh, began to seriously worry and I would, I would uh, <laughs> email my editor and said, I still don't have a title and you know, what am I gonna do? And um, I, so I started researching poems about children because mm -hmm. this book in some ways really is about children. Um, and I found this lovely poem by William Blake called The Nurse's Song, and there was a verse, and at the, one of the last lines of the verse was, and all the hills echoed. And then I saw Allen Ginsberg on YouTube actually singing that poem and then chanting that last. Allen Ginsberg singing that poem. Yeah. That's extraordinary. Uh, yeah, and then he chants <laughs> that last line over and over, and all the hills echoed. And I thought it was such an evocative phrase, and it really just kind of struck me. And, and I, thought, I, I thought I would play with, with that title, and I talked to my editor, Sarah McGrath, and we kind of played around with it, and we changed hills to mountains, for obvious reasons, because mountains has, in Afghanistan, that's the main topography, but also because the mountains are so recurring in this novel, but more so for the word um, echo, because as I just mentioned earlier, there's a, a central event that happens early in the book that then ripples out and, and echoes across time and space and has a, a deep impact on the lives of a great number of characters, each of whom are then given a chance to voice their perspective. And so the novel is composed like a series of, like a mosaic, like a series of vignettes that all are inter interlocked and create collectively one big picture. There is a, a, a scene, the, the massacre, the family massacre involving uh, Roshi, How, is that the correct Roshi, pronunciation? yes. Roshi. And the complexity of the, the moral choices made by those who come to Afghanistan making promises and then the doctor returns to California. Can you expand well, on that a little bit? There's a chapter in this book uh, where there's a, um, an Afghan expat, he's a physician living in, well, in Northern California, <laughs> 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 who's been away for 20 some odd years. Uh, who returns to Afghanistan uh, after the fall of the Taliban and has a very um, difficult experience there. Uh, for one thing, when he arrives there, he feels out of place. He feels like this place used to be his home, but it really is no longer. The experiences of the people on the street have bypassed him. He is not shared in the struggles and the toil and the wars and the, all the horrific things that have happened there. So he's not sure how to connect with the people. He's not sure how to interact with them. He's not sure what is the, what is the proper way to engage with, with, with the locals who are, you know, his own people. Um, so he feels a little bit like a fish out of water. And then he meets this young girl named Roshi who's been um, brutally, brutally injured. And he meets her in a hospital. And something about this little girl awakens something in him and this sort of dormant uh, philanthropic impulse in him. 
and he becomes very attached to this little girl and decides that he's going to help her.